Facilities that make this program possible are provided by the City of Highland Park. Programs are produced independently by members of the community. The City of Highland Park is not affiliated with the following program or the producers of public access programming and is not responsible for the content. The following program does not reflect the opinions of the City of Highland Park. Welcome to Commons Current Events Roundtable. Today we have one of my favorite guests back, Dr. David Hacker, who is a chemical engineer. And uh, he always has so many things that, I, that is so important to learn from. I always thought I knew everything, but I found out when I knew you, I didn't seem to know anything more than what you teach me. But I'll tell you something. Uh, I'm learning a lot about energy policy and the future. And I want to read something that Dr. Hacker, David Hacker, said. He wrote, it was said during the oil crisis of the 70s, the energy is the single most important issue of the 20th century, and it will be for the foreseeable future as well. As the world population grows more aware of its opportunities, as it rises out of poverty, its demands will grow for a greater share of wealth. The use of energy is a major part of that wealth. Wow, David. You always say things that are so important that I never thought of before. And I think well, we want to, today, since you educate me, uh, I'd like to educate our viewers about the future of energy. There are so much en different types of energy, and I want, I've been hearing a lot of things on the news about uh, clean coal. And I think we talked about it yes, this, this afternoon, right? When we Correct. Were, at yes. the bluegrass, and mm -hmm. you were eating that delicious... Uh, that delicious... <laughs> with big bowl. You asked for a big bowl of... What was that again? <laughs> Creole gumbo. Oh, Creole gumbo. Oh, my God. I've never seen anybody eat so much Creole gumbo before. But during that Creole gumbo time, you really talked about all these different energies. And one of the things that is coming out, it's the future for clean coal. What in the world is clean coal? Because every time you touch coal, you, you, and, you know, if anybody's ever touched a, uh, a stone, whatever it's called, a stone, a pebble, or whatever it's called, your hands get black afterwards. So talk about clean coal for us. Well, first of all, let's, let's put this in perspective. <laughs> what do we mean by Clean coal. Clean coal essentially is the elimination of all the waste products that are essentially anti-climate change. And as a result, we, when we say clean coal, it doesn't mean we wash the coal and give it to you. That isn't clean coal. Clean coal happens to be a difficult process in order to preserve coal mining in this country and to attack the issue of climate change. They're really connected. Uh, on the one hand, the last campaign, you remember, it was fought over whether the coal mine should be sustained right. or not. Exactly. Because after all, there are lots of people in West Virginia and elsewhere that are going to lose their jobs as a result of the decline of the coal mining industry. And I believe that's one of the reasons that uh, uh, President Trump one from the coal miners in those cities or those states because they felt that uh, if they vote for him, they're going to keep their jobs. And well, let's, let's look at the reality of the situation Okay. We've before we enter into the issue of what is clean coal. Yes. First of all, coal at the present time is one of the major products that we sell abroad. Mm -hmm. Surprise to many people. Mm -hmm. um, moreover, coal in this country has established a reputation of being the dirtiest fuel we have. Now, why is that so? Well, one of the reasons is that there are two things that occur when you burn coal. And by the way, that 
the reason is that coal produces ash, which you have to dispose of in some way. It produces a lot of noxious, heavy elements. It produces carbon dioxide, which is the issue related to the, end, to the climate change problem, as one believes. Uh, it also, we have to think of the other aspects of coal operations. One, mining. One of the most dangerous operations we have in the country today. I mean, we are well aware of the dangers ensued that miners have when they go into the mine. Mm -hmm. So all of these things are reasons enough to say, why don't we find an alternative fuel if we had no question about climate change at all? And, and that's a mesothelioma that we always hear about this on the This is news. an issue that yeah. miners have, is mesothelioma, yeah. or is black essentially lung a disease. kind of, yeah. we call it black lung, we call right. it... Uh, uh, equivalent to silicosis, mm -hmm. and we have other reason, other names for it as well. Mm -hmm. But a danger to the coal miner. The problem is that the real issue, as we begin to see it now, is an issue of economics. We have begun to produce natural gas at enormous quantities through fracking and other means, but mainly through fracking. It has changed the the, the landscape of energy in this country. Um, but when you, when you say coal, let's get back to the clean coal. Wh well, what, what do you do with clean, why, how do you clean the coal? Well, let's get back to the coal before okay. we get into now we have the this, this, fracking. This, this coal that I described to you, which is really pure carbon, yeah. plus everything else that is associated with it. Problem is, if those people who feel that it's a consequence to climate change, that we are producing too much carbon dioxide, Obama's administration tried to reduce that by putting in regulations that essentially would reduce the likelihood of carbon dioxide being spewed out into the atmosphere. So what are we going to do about it? Well, those people who have their lives dependent on coal mining and coal mine owners are certainly concerned about this because it would say that their product is no longer useful. So, but we still we still sell it to China. You you, you have to you mine coal because it produces an income. Mm -hmm. Okay, but let's think of it. What do you have to do in order to satisfy the new requirements under the advice? I think Trump is willing to address the problem of getting rid of them all. Uh, but let's consider what one have to do. First of all, you want to reduce the carbon dioxide content. How do you do that? Well, first of all, you have to adapt every power plant. And by the way, the power produced by coal in this country is about 70% of electric power. That's quite a bit. Uh, we'll speak of other issues related later. But basically, you have to s essentially capture the carbon dioxide. Now, how do you capture the carbon dioxide? Well, there are a number of ideas that are floating around up there, and there's been a lot of money spent on it through various kinds of federal subsidies. Now, one of the things they do is to call sequestering. And what is sequestering? Sequestering is having a absorber on top of the power plant stack, collecting that and pumping it into the ground into some sort of aquifer, or not aquifer, but essentially a salt dome. That is a kind of cavernous space and it prevents leakage of carbon dioxide. It's not a real issue. Carbon dioxide is heavier than air. So for all purposes, you don't expect a lot of leakage and you expect to pump that into the ground. However, there are aspects of that pumping into the ground because you have to pump it under pressure so that you would probably increase the likelihood of these so-called earthquakes that you have as a result of pumping carbon dioxide into the ground. What else do you have to do? Wasn't it the same what they said about fracking? You know, well, let's the same not get thing. into that now. We're yeah. not in fracking. But I know, We're but in coal that's cleaning right. up. But that's similar. We're cleaning coal yeah. up. And okay. What do we do? Okay. Okay. One was the sequestering of coal, pumping it into the ground, into presumably into saline reservoirs, because saline absorbs carbon dioxide to form mm -hmm. a carbonate. That's one way to do it. Another way, an absorber, in which you have a, a tower in which you pass the exhaust gases through and the tower contains an amine solution, that is a solution, a basic solution, that absorbs the carbon dioxide. Again, clean up. Uh, what more can we do? 
Well, there's not a lot more, but we have to build those plants. Some plants already exist that do that. But David, that ha that's done afterwards. So if you, so if, say we ship um, coal to China, they have to do that. We Whatever just, they do, yeah, they do. Yeah, we yeah, have no control. So Remember, you the, can't. Like, I just want to make a reference to people. You can't clean the coal prior before. It has to be done after. That is correct. Okay, that's um, what we want to make sure. Cleanup of coal is done as a result of the combustion of coal. That's okay. what we're talking about. That's what makes it, quote, clean. On the other hand, the cost of this has becomes enormous to a power plant. Because one of the first things we think about is what is the cost to the public of electricity? Because that's what you're using it for. You're making electricity. You're simply processing coal, burning coal, heating water, getting steam, mm -hmm. passing that into a uh, uh, dynamo, some electrical device that's going to convert the steam energy into electricity. That's what you do. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. Question is, if the environmentalists are correct, you want to clean up the CO2. And coal does not have a great, I mean, it's cost of, the cost effectiveness of a plant today of modifying an existing coal-fired power plant is very high. And also, you don't have the people, like years ago, they, the, the people actually worked down in the coal mines. You know, that's when there was a lot of tragedies, accidents, coal mining accidents, explosions. Now we have a lot of instruments that go into the coal mines, you know, uh, robots, right? It's robotic. Coal mining today is an upgraded process. It's, it's, it's no longer what you thought about when you watch the old, like, How Green Was My Valley. Yeah. Uh, and they had the people little, are not going around yeah. with picks yeah. any longer. And the and donkeys, I machines. think they had okay. those small horses, too. But that's, too. that's yeah. a side, and it's a side issue. Yeah. I mean, assuming that if it, well, if and people. The reason I bring that up is because when people think of coal mining, they think of the miners, the picks. They think of the miniature horses that used to go down there with them. We don't have that. So they don't have That's that gone. anymore. Okay. All right. Let let but let's get to, back you, to to, yeah. gr to ground rules. We need education, David. Let's have some ground rules. Yeah. Okay. The ground rules are: Why is coal diminishing in its interest. Okay. And my conviction is that coal itself, while an effective energy source, will become more expensive if all of these regulations are imposed on the coal mining industry. And as a result of our recent innovation of fracking, we have essentially found a new source of energy that may be more efficient than coal. For example, if you compare gas, natural gas, with coal, it produces half the carbon dioxide that coal does. Okay, the is reason that for that is but natural gas. That, and that's, right, that's as well as pe that, petroleum it, is too expensive to burn. And the petroleum is made from. Petroleum is whatever the happens in the ground as a result of compression and various other reasons. But fundamentally, the issue is that coal does not compete with natural gas on both cost and as well as satisfying some of the complaints of excessive carbon dioxide production. Now, David, does natural gas come from fracking and oil shale? Natural gas is a natural deposit in the ground. Some of it is there in a natural, in a dome of gas. Some of it is in the porous shale rock. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called fracking, because you're breaking the shale rock and releasing mm -hmm. the gas that's enclosed. That's what fracking is. Now, the cost today is the overriding issue when you come down to it. I mean, no matter what the public thinks, the issue will be determined on the basis of economics. And maybe, you know, it's unfortunate to some people because they say, why well, I don't like coal, we ought to get rid of it. But you don't have to have an alternative. We do have the alternative now. So we have natural gas. We, did, we, we always had natural gas. How come we never, I know Israel discovered they have natural gas. They have, uh, they're also, uh, they never, because they always thought that all the other Middle Eastern countries had oil. And now they discovered they have natural gas. The United States had discovered we have natural gas. Why didn't we know about this before? 
We knew about it for a long time. The but problem is do how do you release it? Most of it, if you think about what's happening today, about 10 years ago, natural gas was on a decline. It was getting expensive. The reason for it is that natural gas occurs with petroleum drilling. Okay, so the, that's why you went, if you went past a refinery, in, for example, in uh, Indiana, uh, in South, and you saw the flaring of gas, it was a waste product. So they flared it. Then they realized, boy, it's also a good energy source. Why don't we save it? So we began to turn domestic housing heating facilities into natural gas operated facilities. As a result, we sped, began to change from the old thing, and I can remember well when I carried out the ash cans filled of coal dust and, and garbage to be collected in the morning. We don't do that. We don't burn coal in the household. In fact, most houses are heated by natural gas. So that was one mm -hmm. incursion that the energy industry made, is to change the domestic use of a fuel. Then the environmentalists yeah, began. Yeah, I, I do remember that as a child. I remember that, I remember that too. we lived in an apartment building, right. and, and I remember the, 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 coal, the coal man used to right. come and empty the coal down the basement right. of the shoot. building. And then the janitor would come and shovel the coal right. into the okay. furnaces. Okay, that, that was a yeah. pretty intensive since operation. We're, since what we're only 39, I don't know how I remember, remember carrying yeah. out the ash yes. cans filled with ash <laughs> from the basement. Uh, but given all of that, uh, it has become evident to us now that, the, as I said, the economics of the scene is a major factor. Natural gas is cheaper, produces less carbon dioxide. So Illinois, it's an advantage. And Illinois, our state has a lot of it. Right. Okay, so we are now moving away. And so that even with the impediments of federal legislation, we are moving into a natural gas-fueled economy. That's my conviction of this now. We will see fewer and fewer coal-fired operations going. They'll, be, they'll decline simply because they're out of, they're out of date. And the problem with coal as, a, as an energy source is, is the, how much it costs. It's the cost is one but, of the top. You have to, you know, most people do not realize how, what, how costs are, if, are, are desired, determined. You know, if you have more of something else and it's cheaper to get at it, it's a lot mm -hmm. cheaper in the market than mm -hmm. it is some other thing that you had to mine. Okay, the coal miners earn a good deal of money. This is not an operation in which they're paid uh, low wages. That's one for sure. So that's probably why they want okay. to keep their jobs. So, given, given that, given the fact that we are moving without, with due respect to environmentalists who think we shouldn't do it because it's not the ideal solution, it's still producing carbon dioxide, but half as much if you convert all of your power plants. We still have to do that. The problem is, the United States is an economy dependent upon electricity. It is important to realize that you need, and the projections are being made about a 20% increase in the demand for electricity in the next 10 years. That's a lot. That means you need power plants and you have to find it somewhere. We cannot rely on these so-called renewable power energy systems, wind power and Solar right. power, no matter what anyone has said about it, they are ineffective. They are not going to make a dent. Yeah, well, let's talk about, we talked about natural gas. There's solar power, wind power, and then we'll get to nuclear power. You know, while we still have time, we, you know, being that it's only a half hour show, we got to get to some of the other we sources, to too. An hour show. Yeah, we should. <laughs> But we'll always have you back, and I'm sure you're going to find some other new uh, energy products that we haven't solved yet. So tell the people a little bit about, you know, solar power. What is solar well, power? I mean, obviously it's from the sun, but you know, and okay. I know in Israel there's a lot. Of, they they so, use a lot of solar power. First of all, there. that is a very important issue. Are we uh, in our temperate zone? What is the length of solar radiation in our in the country as compared to other things. Uh, what is the nature of wind location? I mean, is every area de desirable for windmills? No, not at all. 
I mean, we may have wind in some places more efficient than in other places, that is true. So it's not something that is universally applicable, nor is solar power. What is solar power? It's centrally the reception of solar energy, Which is the sunlight. Sun. You've got to have the sun shining okay. to do this. Right. You can't do it without right. it. Okay, you're converting the, the, this heat energy, the radiant energy of the sun, into electricity. How do you do that? One of two ways. Either you have a reflector, namely a mirror that's focused on some local position in which you heat it up. You may have water in it. You may have some other kind of, uh, uh, let's say, liquid that's going to absorb energy. And you boil it as you boil it so that the, s the energy of the sun is being converted directly into steam. And that steam is then goes the same way I described other power plants that goes through a turbine to generate electricity. But now, let me ask you, David, if uh, you live in Florida or Arizona. Well, I said that it's localized. Yeah, it's sun localized. Sun, so, you have more sun yeah. in the south than right. you have in the north. north. So the That's north the nature and, of right. the system. So you would so it really wouldn't work that much in uh, like in our Illinois, well, Wisconsin, you know, whatever Michigan. one says about it, one tries to use it. And at the present time, one of the advantages it has over other means is the fact that the federal government is subsidizing it at a large cost to you. And if you look at the total cost, the kilowatt hours that you that you pay on your bill, if you're going to have solar energy or wind energy producing that electricity solely, not the fact is it isn't solely, but if it were, you would have a very high cost of energy. In didn't your they house. have didn't they have a company that went bankrupt, if you remember oh, solar, solar there was a company that was making solar panels and right. found out it couldn't sell them. But that's one thing. There's another way. There are called s solar cells. These are uh, converters, essentially, based on the fact that sunlight interacting with certain fundamental minerals. How does it go in the houses, though? The other, well, the let solar me finish. Panels if you're, were, you're stepping ahead yeah, of me. You yeah. have a little wafer yeah. that is put on a panel that converts directly. It converts directly, mind you, solar energy into electricity. This is called a solar cell. Now these cells are expensive. Moreover, they are not very efficient. You would like something, if they're 30% efficient at the present time, that's well, is about it better than it. those panels that they well, used to do? Well, those are what them? we're talking about. These are the panels you see on the street corners right. that run the, the, you know, your signals at times. Unfortunately, they are not reliable in the sense that the sun is not always shining. What do you do? In the meanwhile, when you don't have the sunshine, suppose you have a lot of rain during that week, is there you a have way no to, electricity. Is there a way that they have that? It, there's, there's nothing you can nothing do. Nothing at this point where they, you know, any of the sun that we could capture it and you can't capture it. something that doesn't exist. Uh, not yet. Not yet. Never. <laughs> you moreover, I mean, if we think about capturing radiation, and you know that you go to the southwest to get more sun. You don't stay in Chicago to get sunlight. Okay. The second thing is that wind energy, which is another favorite renewable resource. Is that the windmills? Is that what you're talking about? This is windmills. About? These windmills are enormous investments in machinery. That started in Holland. Okay. It, I didn't start in Holland. Holland has them. But every country in Europe has used windmills. We have used windmills. If you go out on the plains, you'll find windmills. But the problem there is... One, we know the wind is not is intermittent. So it how do they no so how do they use it? Well I they mean, hope that it's gonna blow that day <laughs> and they'll have the thing turning. If it doesn't go, there's no electricity. Oh that's it. So it's as simple as that. Th that what else does it th do? That doesn't sound very efficient. What else does it do that you really have to worry about? That no one has considered the enormity of land required in order to put the windmills on. Okay, that's an expense. Because when you go, when you look at pictures of Israel, you see all these windmills. But where is Israel located? In the in where it's very sunny that's and right. on the desert. Okay, so let's not desert. look at Israel as an okay. example. Okay, so people are looking at these countries, saying, "Well, if Israel can do it, we can do it." But they don't realize it's, the climate is different. The, the, the logistics are different. And it's a small different, country. And it's, <laughs> right. Okay. The size so, of New Jersey. So my feeling is, at the present time, the total amount of renewable energy coming from solar energy and from uh, wind power 
is less than 1% of the power produced in the country. That's not a lot. So let's get So to, everyone can yeah. point to say how cheap it is. It has to be integrated into a grid system. Otherwise, it's useless because I, if I have electricity and I'm dependent upon these forms, I have to know where they're located in order to get. If I want to go and electrify Chicago, I don't have much solar energy nor much wind power in the area. So they I do have call to it the Windy it. City, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, you think so that's my argument okay. there. I, I, I discount so what it. So what do you find is the best source of energy My now? personal feeling is if we really are interested in reducing carbon dioxide to a zero, the only solution is a nuclear power plant. There's no other. It doesn't produce it at all. And people are, have a fear of it, and, don't and they? And why are they fearful? Because the word radioactivity tells me that it's equal to cancer. Cancer, right. Okay. They're afraid. Unfortunately, it is not true. <laughs> I mean, even the data that one has collected after Hiroshima shows that the radiation damage directly from radiation was less than they anticipated, they thought. Much less. But how come now, no one is suggesting yeah. now that we drop nuclear bombs in order right. to test that principle. But right. the fact of the matter is, it is not the major cause. And it should not be considered as an impediment to the, to the expansion of nuclear right power. Right now, France and Japan both use nuclear power. Every country uses it to some extent. Uh, not the, fact, the United States and not Germany, and neither, and neither does Germany. Me, Twenty percent of the power produced in this country is nuclear oh, power. Oh, you know what? The Navy uses it. <laughs> Please, I'm talking about direct energy power plant in this country is 20 percent of the total power produced of all sources. Okay? So 20 percent tells me that's quite a bit. And where uh, is that plant located? Well, we have one that's just across the, uh, the lake. It's called the, lake, the Cook Electric Power Plant, which is a nuclear plant. But do people know? And we have I, wonder how many peop I wonder how many people realize they live near a nuclear power well, plant. Well, I live, I live two blocks away from a nuclear power plant in, 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 in Michigan. From the, from the and nobody, and, and nobody I'm not running away, I'm not hiding, and I'm not incorporating lead on my... Uh, and the house <laughs> is so pretty good around you? We have two. No we problem. have two minutes, David. It two is minutes. Not any problem? The problem is we have to be aware of the of the consequences, of the pluses and minuses, and no single power.